Everybody, thanks for joining us. We'll be starting in just a second. Thank you. Thanks for joining us for the second uh, Office with Act user uh, sort of group meeting. Uh, marketing has come up with a new name called Keeping Up with Office with Act. I like it. I think it's good. I think it's pretty representative to what we're hoping to do today. Uh, today, I'll have, uh, I have Audrey joining me, who's responsible for the marketing of Office with Act, and Deanna will be talking to us as well um, as the uh, sales a uh, person that is in charge of Office with Tech. Uh, she's also available to help you guys. She'll talk about that towards the end. Um, today, we'll be talking about some of the new features that we've come up with. Uh, we'll be talking about upcoming features, which I'm sure everybody's interested in. Uh, we'll have one of your fellow Office with Tech user and MSP uh, as a spotlight with Wilkins IT, uh, with Alex that will be joining us just a little bit later. Um, and then we'll touch on. Uh, some of the sales uh, help that we have available. And we'll end with a QA. Uh, about the QA, if you have any questions now or whenever during the presentation, please feel encouraged to put them directly in the question box. Um, we're still, last time we did it on Teams, this time we're doing it on the uh, GoToWebinar. Uh, we're just trying to make sure that we're uh, figure out the right way to have interaction. Uh, certainly today, uh, we want to make sure that you guys ask all the questions that you want to ask about Office with Tech. Uh, you have everybody here that should be able to answer just about anything about the, the software or the Alliance service or, or whatever it is that you wish to know. Um, so let's move forward. Uh, sorry for the slightly late start to the webinar, uh, little technical issues that were sort of uh, plaguing us, but I think everything is sorted out now. So we'll start with uh, the product update. So a quick word on what we've done. So I don't know if you guys saw, uh, whoops, a little alignment problem here. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw, but we've migrated to Azure. A uh, number of reasons to do that. Uh, for the people that don't know, we used to be hosted directly in the uh, Sure Web infrastructure, so in the performance cloud. Um, it served us great, actually. Uh, we didn't change because of any negative reasons towards uh, performance cloud, but it was more uh, positive reasons to go into Azure. Um, a few of them, like I'm happy to share, but a few of them are, are uh, access to new and modern features. So Office Protect has always been a very modern software. Uh, thanks for the person that fixed the deck. Uh, and one of the things that we wanted to do, we've always been, it's been, it's a service, obviously, centric software design. It was always con containerized, so into containers. Um, and we wanted to go even further than that and use Kubernetes to do orchestration and all that stuff, like auto scaling and whatnot. So it made sense for us to move to Azure, which provides that. Another thing that it does is provides lower latency to the back end of Microsoft 365. So it, this is really inside ball stuff, but since you guys are, are close personal friends of Office Protect, uh, I'm happy to share. But the idea was to reduce the latency uh, when we call the back end platform of Microsoft 365 like a, a millions and millions of time uh, every month. Uh, it made sense for us if we can shave a few milliseconds. Uh, it's a few milliseconds times like almost a billion call a month. So uh, that that's going to show up in the end. Uh, and basically what it allows us to do is to be uh, keep scaling because we're adding clients all the time and adding people that we have to monitor, but without degrading performance where it takes longer and longer, let's say, to get your events and things like that. So. Nothing for you to worry about, something for us to worry about. So, and we've been taking care of it. And the migration was final on, I believe it is March 7th that we did the final move. Um, and now 100% on Azure. If you want to know more about how it's hosted and what technology we use and everything like that, I'll keep that to, to sort of private conversation. So, if you guys want to reach out, if you have your own software you're developing or anything like that, you'd like some Azure advice, we're happy to share like the sort of how we built it. Uh, it was quite a bit of an effort and investment, but I'm very happy with the results. Another one that's more uh, technical stuff is, I'm assuming as MSPs, you've heard of the change from uh, delegated admin privilege to granular delegated admin privilege that Microsoft has been nice enough to, to bestow on, upon all of us. Um, I'm, I'm in a tough spot where this is going to bring better uh, security practices. Like it's it's best practice to be as granular as you can with your permission, as you guys know. Um, so the idea here, Microsoft before, as soon as you had 
uh, admin privilege to one of your clients, you basically had access to, to everything forever. Um, not really best security practices. So they've changed it and now you have to ask specifically for the permissions that you need and then you have to give them a, an expiry date. So my, uh, SureWeb is making the switch and Office Protect has already made the switch to using the new GDAP platform. Microsoft is doing what Microsoft does, which is basically uh, setting unrealistic deadlines and then moving them. So they set a deadline like a few months ago where you couldn't uh, use DAP anymore and you couldn't do new ones. And they're moving those deadlines back and back and back as the partners basically are complaining and saying, hey, we didn't have time to do this and that. So now I believe to today you cannot create new DAP relationships, if I'm not mistaken. And soon enough, you'll be forced to, the old ones that you have, if they're not migrated, won't work anymore. So what's the impact on you guys as users of Office Protect? Well, uh, realistically for your existing clients, none at all. Uh, for future clients, if you're buying your Microsoft 365 from SureWeb, you will have to uh, accept the, the GDAP relationship from SureWeb, and then you won't have any impact on Office Protect. If you don't buy your Microsoft 365 from SureWeb, or if you don't accept the GDAP relationship with SureWeb, then you will have to go through the manual, quote unquote, which, which is not manual at all, but you'll have to go through the manual process of authorizing uh, Office Protect which basically means like before Office Protect starts working, you'll have to go into Office Protect and say, uh, click the button that says do the authorization. It will ask you to log in. Um, and from there, uh, it will be the Microsoft page. You'll log in as an admin of your client and it will do the authorization. And after that, there is no difference. So there is no functionality or anything like that that will be affected by this change. Uh, one other change that we made, can seem trivial, but it's actually pretty good. Uh, it's a change that came from new information that is now available from the Microsoft 365 logs. Uh, we now try as much as possible to give you the application that is being used while accessing when we throw an event, uh, either sign in from the right country or file share publicly. So we'll give you which application was used. And in the case of the example that's on screen, it's Microsoft Teams, a web version of Microsoft Teams. But it could be anything. So one that we see often is, for example, uh, Backupify by Dato, uh, the uh, Cronus backups that we offer here at SureWeb. Like we'll see those a bunch of times, uh, Exchange, things like that. So it should give a lot more clarity as to what uh, some event is tied to. Uh, let us know if you have any feedback, if there's any application that you think that we're reporting wrong. Uh, I would say the only downside that I've seen so far and and not a huge problem, but some applications have terrible names. Like one of them was called, uh, what was it called? I think it was just called Backups. And one of them was called uh, System Access. Like was it, probably not great things. Like I would definitely take a long, hard look at those applications. But uh, other than that, it's just been more, more clarity, more helpful. No, okay. So ConnectWise connector updates. So one of the big feature that's coming that we've promised for a long time, uh, is the ability to receive your events directly into ConnectWise. Obviously, the ability to receive your event directly into whatever PSA you're using. We started with ConnectWise after uh, surveying our clients, and then this was the most popular one by far. Um, so development for the beta is complete, so we're ready to go. Participants, like for the people that are given their name and that haven't been contacted yet, don't worry, that's coming next week. So we'll start contacting everybody, asking for the information that we need to set it up, and then we'll get going. Just to give you a bit of uh, context as to what the beta will be, it'd be very simple. So basically, we will um, help you set up so that the right alerts go to your correct customers. And then from there, you, that's where you will get your, your events. You have the ability to still receive them in your email if that's what you want to do. Uh, we'll be monitoring the, the, the state of the ConnectWise connection. So if something breaks during the beta, we'll be able to tell you. Um, we're still looking for additional people. Like, honestly, the more people, the better to test this. Uh, if you're interested at all, send us an email, feedback at officeprotect.com or talk to your account representative at SureWeb. We're ready to start just next week. So if you give us the information, you'll be contacted very shortly and we'll get going. Uh, here's a visual that for the people that are using ConnectWise will we'll ring a bell. So this is an example of a ticket for L status decline that was created directly into ConnectWise with the description and the different states and everything 
I'll add it in and you'll be able to manage it from here. We already have, this is the beta. Uh, we already have the next two version design of this. And we also, I've already uh, begun work on analyzing the work necessary to do it with auto test as well. Another side of the equation, upcoming features. So we'll take a moment to talk about these, uh, a few of the different things that are coming. So we have, I, I think most of these are new. We may have touched on them a little bit in the previous discussion. So we're pretty much done. So I don't know if you guys have followed the, so you may have noticed that we remove some of our control of multi-factor authentication. The reason you may have been wondering why we would remove anything, well, very, very simple is that Microsoft removes one means of authentication to Microsoft 365 or basically PowerShell and stuff like that. And that was the way to manage the per user sort of quote unquote old school MFA, multi-factor authentication. And thank God bless Microsoft. They haven't directly replaced the functionality with anything else that is included in the base account. So the only sort of option that we had was to use the security default. So Azure security defaults, as I'm sure you're familiar with them. Um, and that's what we put into the application. So you can currently control your MFA settings through Office Protect by using uh, the security defaults. We felt that was a bit uh, problematic because as soon as you are using any kind of conditional access policy, you can no longer use security defaults. Why are those two things directly tied together is, is a question for Microsoft. Um, I think they kind of worked backwards, sort of thinking that the future for MFA was conditional access policies, but then they didn't want to give it to everybody, but then they really didn't know it. they needed everybody to have access to MFA. So they created the security default, which is kind of a, call it MVP to be nice, but an MVP way to give everybody access to some kind of MFA control. Okay, so what are we gonna do? So we put in the, the security default because we've always focused on what everybody has access to. More and more we're seeing that our install base is using things like business premium. And we feel that it's good to also sort of leverage some of the functionality that are in there. So that's what those first two items are. Actually, yeah, actually the first five items are that is things that are accessible through some of the more premium uh, some of the more premium features. So first one, NML MFA through conditional access policies. So for the people that have uh, business premium or in any way they have access to Azure AD premium, plan one, uh, they will now be able to duplicate the functionality of security default, but in the conditional access policies. So what that means, does everybody know what security default actually does? Because it does a few things and they're all pretty good if you ask me. So it will force, your admins to use MFA, like right off the bat, no admins, like no MFA, no access for admins, which I think is like minimum requirement. You gotta have that. It will enable MFA for all users. So what that means is they will be asked to sign on to MFA. And I think they will be given, not I think, they will be given a grace period. And I believe that period is 14 days. And then the last thing that it will do for MFA, which is very, very important this day and age, is it will also require a sort of explicit, like it will do the MFA whenever you try to go in Azure uh, Resource Manager. Like anytime you try to do anything with a source resource manager, it will ask you to uh, positively do an MFA test. We, like again, a little bit of inside information for you guys, the uh, fraud on Azure, we've seen skyrocket. Like it has been a, uh, a growing problem for, for us. Obviously we have more and more partners, so could be some of that, uh, but really like we're seeing more and more of a challenge when it comes to uh, broad uh, targeting issue. And the interesting thing is, so I have a minute, like I'll take a minute, to give you some inside knowledge. Um, the discussion internally when it came to, so I was asked very quickly, should we do Office Protect for Azure? The idea was that 
we would have the same kind of security default on your configuration for VMs and things like that. And the thing is, Microsoft has a security center. And that security center does, uh, Microsoft has an Azure security center. Uh, that security center does very similar work to that and, and offers a very similar option. So the idea was that probably not necessary, like probably not that useful. The goal of Office Protect is never to reproduce the exact same thing that Microsoft is already doing. So the idea was kind of put aside. But what we're seeing nowadays and what has brought back the conversation about helping to protect Azure is that People aren't getting hacked like their VMs are getting hacked. What they're getting hacked is their actual Azure account. And then as soon as they have access to the Azure account, they spawn as many VMs, as many like things as possible. And then from those VMs, they do bad things, quote unquote. Most common bad things is uh, crypto mining, which uh, a, a absolutely non-profitable thing to do on a, on a public cloud like Azure. But when you've hacked into the account and you're not footing the bill, <laughs> not such a concern. So anyway, that's why I think it's super important that they're asking for MFA authentication. Like security default is forcing MFA authentication whenever you try to go and manage Azure resources. Uh, uh, impromptu poll, poll question for you, which, which is like we have actual poll questions, uh, but this yeah. one is more of a side thing uh, that's not in the list. But would you find it interesting if, and you could put it in the QA or the comment or whatever, like we'll earn the chat. We'll definitely read it. Um, would you be interested in Office Protect helping monitor and secure your Azure subscriptions? And when I say that, I don't mean directly like at the infrastructure level, like managing the, the network in Azure, but I mean more in like accessing the accounts and things like that. Actually, I have good news, and I'm, I'm jumping a little bit all over the place, but I think you'll bear with me because it's good news. We're already monitoring, Office Protect is already monitoring your Azure access. So the access to the Azure platform, they're through the AD, same as Microsoft 365, and those access will show up in our logs, and we do already have, uh, like we treat them as any other sign-in to the platform that, that we see. So there is some detection on that side, but the question is the same. Would you be interested in Office Protect sort of extending that, that protection and that, that awareness to the Azure platform? And if we did, would you be more interested about like the fraud prevention, like anybody sort of hacking into your ARM account and spawning a bunch of resources, things like that? Or uh, more directly about uh, like firewall settings and things like that. Okay, moving on. Now that we will start playing with the conditional access policies, we'll have one that is uh, that has been requested quite a bit, which is, uh, it's, it's phrased here as a positive. So allow sign-ins only from the list of authorized country. So you're familiar with Office Protect, you know that you have a list where we detect sign-in from authorized country. So this is just, currently this is just informative. We let you know that something has happened. Uh, by using conditional access policies, we would allow you to block those sign-ins. Obviously a much more drastic sort of approach where the people are basically denied access. Uh, which can create problems, uh, but also much more secure, which it, it's on the different side of boom. So basically, instead of being to telling you after to detect it, it would actually protect you. Um, same thing, Microsoft Defender for Office 365 is a very, very popular add-on amongst our clients. I think it's the most popular add-on, like the people that have business premium have it, but it's also sold quite a bit as a standalone add-on. Um, we will start to sort of put that in our feature template and we'll be able to control directly from Office Protect to be able to enable safe link, enable safe attachment, enable safe documents. Um, do you guys know what that means? I'm assuming you do. I'll go quickly. Safe links is basically if you have a link in an email, if you click it, it will go through a verification with Microsoft and then after that, it will send you to the destination if it's good. Safe attachments means before you open anything, it will be verified by any attachment. It will be verified by Microsoft 365. And I believe safe document means uh, scanning in OneDrive, SharePoint, Teams, which is all basically SharePoint. Uh, and then another thing that's coming, which we've been sort of wanting to do more of is SharePoint settings. The thing with SharePoint is, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, not a lot of people like pure SharePoint. Like it's, it's still very popular within enterprise and things like that, but 
at the end of the day, small businesses have chosen like other smaller, like their platforms. But OneDrive is very popular and Teams is very popular. And as you all know, the big secret is that anything to do with file management and OneDrive and Teams is SharePoint. So we will offer you to disable anonymous sharing, which, which is, you'd be surprised how much that's the source of a lot of problems. And then block guests from sharing content, honestly, something that should be completely off all the time. Uh, so it's there as well. If you have any questions about those settings, if there are other settings that you would like to see, please let us know. Um, we're always adding them. It's always a, a, we're always trying to weigh what is very useful from what is just noise. We try to not add every setting. I don't think that's relevant. We try to group them as well. Like for example, when we did uh, enhance MFA, we put a number of things together instead of giving you like three different options. Okay, a few more things that are coming. So the full version of the ConnectWise connector, uh, basically that will al allow you to self-manage it, like create it, re remove it, edit it yourself, doing it all in the interface. Uh, Autotask connector is being designed. Like I said, I'll go quickly because I mentioned those. And then there's two major things that are coming that I think everybody will be interested in. So events in app remediation action. So basically for each event, well, you will have the ability to sort of intervene on it with a sort of a single button type of thing as much as we can. So a very, very, very simple example would be you have a sign in from authorized country, you, you click on it and then you'll have a button that says suspend account. And then it will suspend accounts in the correct way. So disabling the existing sessions and things like that. Like it will do all the things in the background to allow you to do that. Um, and then we'll have those with, with all of our events. Some of them will guide you more to a, uh, a place in Microsoft where you can take the actions that are necessary because sometimes it's not like directly one action that you want to take. But most of the time we'll be looking to automate and give you the action directly like at one click. Again, would love feedback on that feature. Would you be interested, like how do you do remediation now? Would you be interested in doing it directly from Office Protect? And what would you expect from remediation in Office Protect? Like which type of cases would you like to see most? Uh, Guillaume? Yeah. We've got, we've got uh, Donna that uh, would, would like to understand if it will be easier and if we can exclude countries. Well, um, sorry, for the sign in from the rice countries? Yeah, for the the list and exclude for for you know she's doing like manually she's got she needs to go to the list and exclude a ton of, of stuff and she wants to include like exclusion of countries you know. Yes, so that's a question I would need a little bit more detail because that is the feature like you can absolutely exclude countries uh, that is a possibility. Uh, so yes, if I understood correctly the question, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Next, also big big change that have been requested very much by the users uh, is the sort of a new version of our ignoring feature. So as you know, ignoring basically means you get an event, but you don't want to get it again because it's not it's not actually a problem. So you click ignore. Right now, it's a very one to one type of effect where it creates a rule for ignoring that is exactly the event that you just got. Um, what we're building now is the ability to create like to give you more flexibility. So two major things. One, the ability to put wildcards. So for example, sign in from the right country, it's backupify, it's one, like it's a bunch of different users, it's one application, it's one IP. So you would click any of those alerts, click ignore, and then instead of creating the rule right away, which would be for a single user for this application, this IP address, you could say for all users, if it's this IP address and this application, then ignore, the, the event, don't send me an alert. And then you would have the ability to see those and did those and change and put more and everything like that. The other feature is you can also make uh, time bound ignore. So for example, you're going on vacation to Morocco. You don't want to add Morocco to the list of authorized countries, sorry, Morocco. Uh, so you could just create the rule and say it starts next Friday, it ends two weeks after, and after that, it sort of disappears and it's gone. So I think the use case I just named is the most common one, the one we've heard more often is uh, 
the travel, like known travel, either for, for business or for vacation or whatever it is, like somebody goes to China to visit some factory or something and they start throwing errors, you don't necessarily want to ignore China. Like you just want to ignore that one person in China for the next two weeks. So you'll be you'll have the ability to do that very, very easily. So that's what's coming, let's say, short to midterm. Um, we're we're going to start putting dates on those as soon as we can, give you as much information as possible. Before we get to actually, I don't know. Well, so do we have question now? Because I'd rather uh, have our conversation with Alex, and then we can go to sort of final questions after that. Any questions for right now? We've got a poll, polls questions. You want to do them oh, now? Oh, yes, the polls. That's why it's not yeah. questions from you guys. It's questions from us guys. Sorry. Yeah. That's my mistake. All right. So we have a few questions for you guys. I think that somebody else started. Yeah, I shared the screen. So the question is, would you report a true positive backers to help improve future, uh, future accuracy? Yeah. So to be clear, the idea here is that right now you get alerts and you deal with them. Sometimes they're good, sometimes they're bad, but you don't like you don't really have a way to tell us whether we did a good job or not, other than if you click like the ignore button. The thing is, there's two sides to this, and I want to be completely transparent, is that some people are sensitive on, on privacy and everything like that, and they don't want to talk like if there was, really was a problem and everything. We wouldn't ask you for more detail. We would just ask you like thumbs up, thumbs down type of thing on the events. Like I don't know the exact uh, user experience that you would get, but that would be the idea. Like we'd be looking for you guys to sort of guide us and give us a sense of what was good and what was bad. And the idea with that is we will use that as very, very clear and direct feedback, use our machine learning and run it on top of that, and then try to make everything more accurate. And when I say more accurate, it's at two levels. It's for everybody. So meaning if we see something that repeats itself and is very common, then we'll try to apply it to everybody. But it will it would also eventually allow us to learn about you. So if you tell us what's important to you, not important to you, then that will give us a, a much better sense and give us the ability to fine tune office protection. Uh, I see that a bunch of people voted, so I appreciate that. If anybody, like before we go to the next question, anybody else want to jump in? The people that are looking at a different screen, I'm looking at you. Uh, if you have a chance to jump in and uh, and go in and vote, that would really help to uh, steer our decisions for the future. All right, so that's good. Let's go to the next question. So which feature are you most looking forward to? I've got a bench up. Yeah, so very straightforward question. The, the, all the features that are there are the ones that I just talked about. We're making you sort of pick one. It doesn't mean that we won't do any of them, but we were kind of curious to see if there were uh, specific ones that would stand out. Uh, I can see the results. Can they see the results? Can everybody see the results? Mm, I'm not so sure now, but you can announce them anyway. I think it's a yeah, good yeah, idea. Yeah, no, no, that's yeah. fine, but I didn't want to announce them if everybody could see them. So just for your information, at the previous question, the vast, vast majority of people answered yes, they would share uh, through and false positives. Uh, here it's it's very distributed and most people have voted, so I appreciate that. Uh, PSA connectors are on top, but it's it's very distributed. So I'll take that as a good thing. It means we're focusing on, on all things that are important to you guys. Uh, great, terrific. So since most people have voted, I think we'll go directly to the next question. Thank you again to the people that are participating. That's very appreciated. Last question. Do you have any clients that need to meet the following compliance? So we've got IPA, PCI, DSS, CMMC, Pipe Peeper, ISO 2701. So this one is multiple choice, meaning you can pick more than one if you have clients that fall under like multiple compliance. Um, when I say ISO 2701 and other, I don't mean all other compliance. I mean other ISO compliance. Uh, the goal with this question, and I know there's more, but we were we are limited to five choices with these polls, so I had to pick five. Uh, the idea here is not so much to, well, the idea is to use that information to know what's relevant to you guys when we work on compliance. We're looking to uh, tie more information between which settings help with which control of which compliance. So, for example. Turning on the logs helps you with control 3.11 in CIS for Microsoft 365, for example. 
CIS not being a, a certification, but definitely being something for hardening. Um, but so we're always curious to see what what's relevant to you guys. I find it I find it so right now. Uh, uh, HIPAA and PCI DSS are the biggest winner, quote unquote. I'm surprised that CMMC is not sort of catching more people's eyes. Uh, I don't know if it's for a lack of awareness. I'm speaking to people that are our clients that are in the US. There's a number of you guys. Uh, so <laughs> that's a good comment. Uh, we'll talk about that, Alex. That's a good comment. Uh, CMMC is the new set of control that the U.S. government has imposed on all of its departments, and the, the first one being the Department of Defense. Uh, but the thing is, in that specification, there is a very clear part that says everybody that works for you, contractors or anything like that, have to also match the requirements. So, for example, so anybody that does any work for any of the American government, any department. We'll eventually soon have to meet CMMC. And I'm not a certification uh, compliance expert, uh, but that seems like it's a lot of people. <laughs> okay, so yeah, HIPAA on top, followed by PCI DSS. Okay, thank you very much for answering the questions. We'll move on. This is all very, very useful. So time for our MSB spotlight. With me today, I'll have Alex uh, Wilkins from Wilkins IT. Uh, rather than do his introduction, I'm going to give him the, the task of introducing himself. Let us know sort of where he comes from, how he started, and, and his current situation. Hey, uh, hi, everybody. I'm Alex Wilkins from Wilkins IT. I'm president, as it says on the screen. Uh, we've been in business for, we just passed our 11th year. Um, we've been a Sherwood partner for nine of those years. Uh, made some mistakes in the first little bit there. Then we partnered with ShareWeb and solved everything. And uh, our primary focus is managed service provider. And we're in uh, Durham region, which uh, for those that don't know where that is, we're just a bit east of Toronto. Uh, most people know where Toronto is. Uh, our focus is less than 25. So lots of micro businesses. And uh, that's it. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about sort of how long you've been using Office Protect, how you've kind of integrated it with your offer. I'm not, and again, like this isn't so much to convince the people that are here that Office Protect is a good idea because I think everybody here is a, already a user, but more about uh, maybe like the particularities of how you integrate it in your offer and what you, you find that works well or less well. Yeah. Um... Well, you can actually answer that question of when we started using Office Protect because you can tell me when it launched. So yeah, so, almost five years ago now, basically. basically. Um, yeah, and we we have it rolled into uh, a bundle, uh, so we don't uh, sell it as like a line item or as an added service. Uh, we actually make that a part of our bare minimum product now. Uh, we made that transition to almost three years ago now. So if somebody wants to utilize us for Office 365 management and services, they must use our bundles, which includes Office Protect and Backup. Okay. And do you present it as a separate product? Like, do you use the name Office Protect or is it just part of your service and it's kind of more what you're doing for them in regards to Microsoft 365? Uh, no, our bundles are use very generic language because Microsoft loves renaming their products. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> we stayed away from specific naming conventions. So we just call it Office 365 email or Office 365 apps and email with security monitoring and backup. So that way, if we change backup vendors or change security vendors or any of those changes happen in the back or Microsoft renames their product again, which they just did just recently uh, with the whole NZE thing, um, we are marketing and our, uh, all that collateral is not affected. Okay. Um, you mentioned that you deal with a lot of uh, smaller customers. Uh, you must be like pretty close to them. Like you must manage most things IT for those companies. I'm assuming. Um, we talk a lot about MFA. I talked about it in the upcoming feature where we'll put we'll put that forward. A lot of the security vendors are talking about MFA as it it's been solved. Like it's there. Use it. People that don't use it are crazy. Um, I've been getting sort of a different sound. 
from like I'm, I've been getting different feedback from our partners where in practice it's still very much a challenge to deploy it and get people to use it and understand why it's necessary do you find that it's sort of a solved issue or, or are you still sort of fighting uh, users on on the fact that it's necessary and that you have to put it in its place uh, we're pr it's probably about a 50 50 split between you know most people have heard enough about uh, 2FA, MFA, and all the different acronyms and words that we use to describe it, that they, when we come to them and say, hey, PS, we're going to turn on security defaults, uh, you have 14 days to set this up, here's an article on how to do this, or here's a video to walk through, or book a call to help us do, uh, help you do it, um, they go, yeah, no problem. And the other 50% are, why do I need this? And uh, then we just have a, you know, a script that we run through of like why it's important and uh things of that nature so um yeah it's about a 50 50 split well let's let's dig just a little bit on the people that are uh sorry for my french but being a pain in your ass uh you said like you have kind of a script like can you talk a little bit about that because i think if you found a way to convert those those sort of irreductible like the people that resist still I think people would be curious to kind of hear about it. I, I know nothing's magical, but I think any help will, will will do good. Yeah, and we have, you know, we all think that we have unique situations or we provide unique value to clients and all that stuff, and we're no different in that uh, ideology. Um, but because we work with a lot of very small businesses, I'm usually dealing with the head, the president, you know, team of two or team of three. Uh, so I'm always talking direct to the person that makes all the decisions. So it's a pretty easy thing for us to um, have a small discussion of, of explaining like why MFA is important because, you know, just using and password, you know, I could go on for, you know, a minute or two about, you know, all the benefits and we all know about the benefits anyways of MFA. But I think the key difference of how we go about it is we don't give them the option, um, which is a little bit of a hard stance. Um, but we, you know, uh, alert them that it's, hey, PS, this is what's going to be happening on this day. Once we flip the switch, you have 14 days. Pre-book an appointment. Pre-book some time. It takes, you know, anywhere from five to 20 minutes to set it up, depending on, you know, a variety of factors. We're happy to walk you through it and all that stuff. And it's made the transition a lot smoother. Um, People are going to grumble about change no matter what, even if it's they literally just have to scan a QR code and press yes on a pop up. Um, yeah. They're still going to grumble about it. But uh, as as a managed service provider, it's our job to manage the service properly. And right. I think MFA is definitely one of those. Yes, that's how you do it properly things and uh, forcing it um, while it may be a little bit harsh in our um, industry and the client that we deal with, it's a, oh yeah, you have our best interest at heart. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna still complain about this, but I know that at the end of the day, you're doing the right thing for us. Yeah, I, I think you've touched on something critical here with all cybersecurity is change management, right? So change management includes me, meaning with a big emphasis on communication. Um, if, like it's not just a button or a, a setting in in an application like Office Protect. Like it's not it's not just a conditional access policies. Like it's it's how you communicate it to people, how they understand how it's important, and that they're uh, they are a vital part of cybersecurity. Uh, I think I, I've I've said this quite a bit, but I, I think it's the most vital part of cybersecurity is is your end users because at the end of the day you can have the f fanciest system if people are still clicking on everything <laughs> eventually you're going to run into issues right yeah and the most the uh the biggest thing from from that kind of perspective like we have real life examples as early as within the last 12 months of clients that you know they resisted mfa and then they got breached uh, or they had a scare or they clicked on a link or they replied with some information and nothing happened because we were able to stop it or whatever, but it was still like that. We still have that active thing. I, You can call this person right now and they can tell you the story if you're really still on the fence about MFA and they will talk to you and tell you to do it just like I am right now. And the, having those real life experiences rather than something that's like humdrum from a, you know, a marketing document from Microsoft yeah. also 
help sell the feature where it's like, no, I have someone that lives down the street from you or in the town beside you that this happened to. They're a two person business. It will happen to you. This isn't just a, you know, big companies are being a, t uh, a target. You're just right. as much, if not more. A hundred percent. Like I, that's a very good point, Alex. Uh, too many times I see uh, people that are trying to like Microsoft, for example, even, even Sherweb does it, but we try to use like Gartner statistics to convince people when really like when we're talking about a uh, small museum businesses, generally they'll respond a lot better to, like you said, exactly like you said, real life. I don't want to repeat. You said it perfectly like real life example, somebody very similar to you, very close to you had this situation happen. It will happen to you as well. Like you're, you're, too many people still think that uh, they won't be targeted, um, which I think is kind of a common mistake because now everything is automated. So everybody will be targeted. Like it doesn't matter. Uh, everybody eventually gets a, a, a phishing campaign or a, like ransomware or, or a worm is probing their firewall. Yeah, if, you, if you've had an email longer than a couple of years, it was involved in some big, huge master corporate breach, and it is out there somewhere, and it will get spammed, and it will get fished one day. Yeah, that that uh, a vibe in tone has has demonstrated that very very indily is that most likely your email is not in one breach, it's in fifty breaches. <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, so I want to thank you for your time. Uh, maybe some parting okay. words for you. Uh, anything about like any advice you want to give MSP or any successful approach you've had? Because I know technically, generally, the people that are here are very technical and they're very good at what they do. Sometimes sales and marketing or, or how to drive the business forward is, is sometimes what's a bit more of a challenge sometimes. I don't, I don't want to assume anything. Uh, but anything you want to you wanna share with the rest of your uh, fellow MSPs? Uh Yeah, like in a specific like Office Protect one, like the, the cost of the platform is offset almost immediately by having you know the knowledge that you have best practices automatically set and regularly set um, and because we feel safer when we talk to clients the clients feel safer um, so that's a, um, a point there if you're kind of on the fence to playing it like system wide um, but then also just for bundling services like put it in a bundle and make it a minimum requirement as an msp we're not software vendors we're service providers and having security and backup, I've already said several times before, should be our minimum level uh, for cloud services. Yeah, I've, I've found that MSPs are significantly more profitable when they have that hard line. Yes. Because otherwise they're always dealing with somebody that doesn't pay, first of all, but then also has a lot of problems <laughs> and, and are, are often very uh, demanding as well. So yeah, absolutely. It's a good way to make sure that your business is profitable and and you don't get into even uh, um, legal trouble because because now people are expecting you to have a certain level of cybersecurity as well. Okay, so I want to thank you for your time, Alex. Uh, very appreciated. We'll try uh -huh. to have uh, somebody on every uh, every one of those calls because I think uh, Alex's voice is much more relevant than mine, uh, and we'll try to, to duplicate that moving forward. Thank you very much, Alex. You're welcome. So before we end today, and that we're right on time, this is very good. Uh, I want to end it over to Deanna, who's going to be talking a little bit about uh, what's going on with sales and marketing and how we can help you. So not this is not to sell you anything. It's quite the opposite, is how we can help you with your sales and marketing. Deanna. Yes, thanks, Guillaume. Uh, hi, everyone. Thanks for joining today. Thanks for sticking with us. As Guillaume said, we're in the home stretch. It's between, I'm coming between you and the door at this moment. So um, listen, I just wanted, if we haven't met yet, um, let's connect. My email address is there. Also, um, you know, check me out on LinkedIn. I'd love to, to connect and stay connected. Um, what I wanted to just give you an idea of some of the things I've been working on with um, some Office Protect partners is train the trainer. So, um, some of the feedback that I've gotten over the last few months while I've been in role is that um, they want their sales team empowered to be able to talk about Office Protect and position it to their clients. So I'm more than happy to, you know, set up a training session with your sales team, help them understand how to integrate the advantages of Office Protect into your solutions and your security stack. I've also just finished a slide deck that you can use that you can customize. It's white labeled. It will be in the toolbox soon. 
But if you want it before that lands, please uh, just reach out through email and I can send it over to you. Um, so we're working on a lot of extra resources to grow your business. What you'll notice in my title is I'm a business development manager and I really do want to help you develop and grow your business. Um, my background, if you look me up on LinkedIn, I've been in the channel my whole career, worked with a lot of different vendors, uh, primarily working with VARs and MSPs most of that time. So um, I think I have a really good understanding of what you guys need and uh, what will help you grow your business. And also I'm on, you know, my teammates are security subject matter experts. So beyond Office Protect. So if it's that holistic approach that you're looking to take, if you're looking to revamp your security stack, or you just want to understand how Office Protect works within um, those other security products, reach out to me as well. And I can connect you either directly with me or individually to those security subject matter experts. And uh, that's all. That's all I had to say. I just wanted to make sure I introduce myself. If we haven't already connected, let's um, let's get together. Yeah, absolutely. So those are all very good points. I think one of the things that people tend to forget is they see us as, hey, they're providing us like licenses to products, which is great. That it is like a lot of our primary function. But at the end of the day, our value is not so much that as it is the the what we can bring to try to make your life a little bit easier. Um, these things around Office Protect as to how to use it, how to pitch it and all that is is something that you should expect, like something that you should demand from us. So do feel encouraged to ask for these things. If you think of something else that would help you to sell Office Protect or to implement it within your company or sell it, let us know. Like we're, we're, we're very open. Like we don't generally say no to those type of requests. Like we like partners that are invested so if you have an idea and you're like, this is what's going to help me drive it forward, let us know. So any uh, final questions that we want to address in the webinar? If you have questions that haven't been answered directly on the webinar, uh, just uh, don't worry. We'll, we'll reach out to you and answer them offline. Sometimes some of those questions are, are maybe not for general consumption. Uh, oh. Okay, so I'll take the offline. And I have some suggestion as well for future, so that's great. So don't that's hesitate, fantastic. again, um, we don't have it on the screen here, but feedback at office-protect.com, so office-protect.com uh, is uh, something that a whole team monitors. So if you have anything, you have a situation where you're like, not like, why is Office Protect providing this this way? Uh, that's all good. So with this, we will end the, with this uh, meeting. Um, if you have any suggestions for the next uh, user meeting, please send us those as well, either through your rep, directly to Deanna or to myself. I think most of you have my contact information. Uh, do not hesitate. The feedback that is provided by our users is what drives Office Protect forward. So again, thanks everybody that participated. Thanks, Alex, from, uh, from Wilkins IT specifically. Uh, and we will see you next time.